What is up, guys? It's your boy, GRC. We're coming at you live, not every single day anymore. Every once in a while, me and Sam are coming on live. Today, we're talking about Chia Network, and we are doxing a very special guest, Foods. If you guys know Foods, I want biceps in the chat. We all hang out in spaces all the time. Foods is in spaces 24-7. I think Chia Network is special. I really do. I'm not the guy. I'm not sitting over here buying Chia. And I want to figure out what's going on. But to be honest, when I look at Bitcoin, I see problems. I, it's three three hour transaction time. That's not going to fly with me. <laughs> I just I'm sorry. Like I'm just not dealing with that. I think that's ignorant. I think it's stupid. And then with Ethereum, we have centralization problems, right? And proof of stake, proof of work, a little switch up, right? We oh, we're just going to switch it. It's a little switch switch. I think there's problems. On Ethereum, I cannot do transactions effectively unless it's Sunday night and Gwei is under 20. And 3% of the population is in cryptocurrency. That's not bullish for scalability. Considering I had $500 end stakes last bull run, and now I'm getting back to that similar level and banks are going insolvent and stable coins are crashing. And we're in, not in a bull run. I mean, we could be in the potential beginning stages, but, and then there's this blockchain called Chia. And Chia is a little bit different. It's like the people behind it actually cared about what they were doing. And they said, what is Bitcoin doing wrong? What is Ethereum doing wrong? Let's try to make something better. Okay. And we have a special guest from the Chia community, we have Sam in the green room. We're going to talk about Chia Network, XCH. Yes, I do have a Chi Rex. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I, But seriously, I want to talk about it more. We got proof of time and space. They took everything that Bitcoin was doing. They made it better, more energy efficient. And honestly, something that institutions can probably pick up worldwide. And that's the part I'm kind of getting into now. Gene talks a lot about institutional, the government's coming in, wor the world coming in, right? And how they security is so important. All these little things are so important. In Ethereum, to me, I mean, I like making money and all, but I want to know what's going to I want to be at the cutting edge of what's going to happen in 10 years. You know what I mean, Sam? So let's get into it. We got foods. We got Sam. Biceps in the chat. Foods. Oh, what's up? This is awesome. What's yes, good, bro? Hey, thanks. Up. Let's go, big boys. Yeah, Woo! let's go. What's good, bro? Hey, thanks for coming on, man. It's yes. good to good to meet you in person. Um, yeah, and and there's a lot of support here in the chat. I see curricula in the chat. Monkeys. Yeah, let me say hi to the chat real quick. I didn't see all these chia leaves. They're actually oh. called seedlings. If you go to the emoji guys and you're looking, they're called seedlings. Um, <laughs> we got crypto curricula. Monkey Zoo, Gra Monkey Zoo, we got a show coming up, that's for sure. Bubble Trouble. I, I want to do like a once a week Chia episode where we just like bring the gangs on because they all have so many ideas. Waffle Me DJ, and that's a great name. Monkey Zoo, great to see you guys. Steve, how you doing, Steve? That's a killer yes. picture right there, Steve. All the boys are here. <laughs> Shin, Knox, Bill, everybody, great to see everyone. Ooh, Frack in the house. Good to see you, Frack. All right. So let's start this off. How did you get involved in the Chia Network? You know, I've I did about three hours of studying today just because I wanted to actually, you know, keep moving forward in my Chia journey. It's all very simple, really, when you think about it. Like it's not that complicated, but I want to know how you got into Chia, right? Like why Chia? Why not Ethereum? Why not Bitcoin? Why not these other communities, right? How did you get into your journey and like some of your background? So uh I Found out about Chia, I think, at the very beginning of uh, 2021. Um, I was just kind of cruising Facebook one day, and it just popped up on my feed. And I was like, well, hmm, what is this interesting thing? Um, I was kind of screwing around on NiceHash at the time, just like renting out my uh, GPUs for Bitcoin. Um, but I was like, yeah, this is really cool. Like, I was, I'm like a big gamer, so like uh, graphics cards mining is a little bit of a 
um, sacrilegious kind of thing in the gaming community. So I was like, oh, hard drives might be interesting for my friends in, like in the gaming community. So I checked it out. Um, I started um, like a little farm right after mainnet launch, uh, which is actually coming up. The Genesis block is uh, March 19th. Mm. Two year anniversary of Chia uh, mainnet launch is coming up next weekend. And we got a bunch of fun stuff. Oh, that was back. that was March 19th, 2021 then. That is yeah, oh, pretty cool. That's seven. That's crazy. It's only been two years. Like it almost feels like this stuff has been around forever. Two years. Sam. Oh man, when you're in <laughs> NFTs, like a year feels like twenty. So yeah. And so, so you so got you, how'd you find your way into Chia? Like how did you get involved? Like who dude, was, I literally just took see it. I, I found it on Facebook, like I was saying. I just kind of seen it. I start went to chia.net, just kind of took a look around. Um, I didn't really think anything, like, I didn't really start doing anything. Like, I I didn't really start getting into it until just after Mainnet launched. Like, I was still kind of, like, researching it. I never, like, I made my first plots, I think, about April 1st of 2021. So just a couple weeks after the Mainnet launched. Um, and it was crazy at that time. Like, there was all kinds of hype. Um, it was just a totally different time and place. And, you know, the price was, like, crazy high. So I started a little farm. Had about 25, 30 terabytes kind of plotting, and it was really slow plotting. So it took me like almost a couple months. I started farming on one of the OG pools, which is Foxy Pool. So I started making a little bit of dust, um, which kind of really got me going. Um, and then I just kind of took it from there, man. Just one hard drive after the other. Like I was a really big, like early hobby farmer. Um, and then, uh, you know, the end of 2021, I kind of found NFTs and it's kind of been a whirlwind since then. I've uh, went on to, you know, be a project founder. Um, you know, I kind of founded the church. I got the Marmot verse project. I got alpha gooses. So I'm kind of just learning the technology as I go. I haven't been around since like 2015, like other people or, or earlier, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of just like learning one step at a time um re more recently i've kind of taken on a little bit of a role as like a metaverse leader with uh with the church of chia which is kind of like a fun little um maxi group that we started over here that you know likes to run crusades and i got my background up here for everybody to see i see uh, gene with the cigarette that's that's pleasing to the eyes oh yeah that's that's the half life okay that's the half life and then we got uh uh pope bram and uh then there's See, these are things that me and sam don't deal it, me and sam are like a little bit autistic when it comes to anything playful and artworky so we're just i'm trying to go with the flow i see but one thing that i do know is that the web3 community in ethereum polygon all these other chains is ginormous it's huge and if they could have a place to go that was cheap and fun it would be incredible what is, I want to know what is different about NFTs on Chia rather than Where NFTs start. on Ethereum blockchains. So first thing is NFTs on Chia are peer-to-peer, 100% peer-to-peer. So there's no aggregating back to coin when it comes to NFTs on Chia. The asset is the asset. One of the main differences and one of the key differences of Chia's NFTs are each individual NFT is its own smart contract, okay? So when you're minting an NFT um, collection on any of these other blockchains, you're writing one, small, one, one smart contract for all of the NFTs, where on Chia, if you do, you know, whatever number collection, you're writing a smart contract for each individual NFT. So they can all have their own little individual caveats with you know smart contracts but at the same time you also take ownership of the smart contract once you you know kind of either buy it or take the transfer so you actually own the nft like where on you know you just might own the image on another blockchain right we're on Chia, you actually own that nft when you say own i think of like uh the the image and and the image on Ethereum is not stored on Ethereum, right? So it's just stored on some server somewhere that at some point will go down. So is that not the case when you say you're, because the NFT, right, for most people yep. is, is an image, right? So is that image actually stored uh, on the blockchain or is uh, it? 
Yes and working. yes and no. Now, in the case of my space uh, space marmot project, yes, the NFTs are stored on the blockchain, one hundred percent. Um, but in the case of just like your general day-to-day -day NFT on Chia, no, um, they're all pointers. But the cool thing with Chia is you can add multiple pointers. So you can have multiple backups, right? You can have backups within backups and you can add pointers as long as you're the owner, right? So if you own an NFT and you care about the image, you can back up that image for yourself, right? So that it's always there so that nobody else can screw with it essentially, right? It can't, it's, it's 100, they're also 100% immutable. They can't be changed, right? You can't go and it's very hard to flip images on Chia, like do the whole release, you know, kind of drop. It's very, there's a little bit of more of a caveat to how you play with them. Um, just because like the smart contracts have to interact with each other, but yeah, there it's like, it's one of those things where you look at it and by having all of these like segregation models, you're actually making NFTs more secure at the same time, right? So um, that's one of the, the also caveats of Chia NFTs is you're looking at making, you know, peer to peer accessible, you own the NFT and that's what is kind of driving it forward. What What's like, I don't own any NFTs unless it's like a, you own some. You might not know about them, but I think you own a couple. Uh, with Unless with LP, you with have LP. 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 Yeah, those are the only ones that I know of that I'm aware of. Um, and it, our NFTs, and and this is a pure pure like ignorance question because I don't pay. I like it's not something that's like I pay attention to. Um, our NFTs, like something that I do pay attention to, is like peptides, which are like very nuanced you know in the world like of supplements and drugs it's like sits in the middle and there's different things that you could do with them and i talked to buddies about them and like is it kind of like that but like about picture i, I guess i just I don't see. understand so you got to remember what nfts are and they're actually a hash of data on the blockchain so they're realistically the image is just being pointed to it's just a holder mm -hmm. Right, like the actual cryptographic information of it is the most important part. And Chia actually, before all of the image NFTs took NFTs to a whole completely other level. Like Chia has actually the blockchain uses one of the probably the most in like ingenious uses for NFTs that I've ever seen. And that is when you're pooling and when you're farming, right? So when you're when you make a like a farm, okay, and you're pooling. You essentially, before you do all that, you make a pool NFT and you plot to that pool NFT. And that pool plot NFT is actually the mechanism for distributing rewards on Chia. That's how they have the individual uh, farmers sign the blocks because the pools are only ever kind of dealing with this, with this plot NFT. They're not actually dealing with the actual plots themselves. So, so I just want to make sure I'm understanding this. So, when you're plotting, you're basically mining effectively, but the, the nomenclature is different, yeah. correct? Okay, so if, if I were to set up a, a miner, or in this arena, it would be called a plot, right? And I want to start mining. I have to initially create a smart contract that is effectively like an NFT, like on V3, yeah. Uniswap kind of thing. It doesn't really serve uh, a purpose in the standpoint of like, oh, here's a cool image. Uh, yep. but it serves a utility purpose of yes. like, that's how you're going to actually receive your uh, rewards from mining. Yep, exactly. 100%. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, you're plotting to an NFT and that NFT is taking all of the information of the, you know, the amount of plots and, you know, I'm sure there's some cool stuff in there. I'm not super development heavy, but I'm sure there's some like really smart stuff in there. But yeah, essentially all they do is, distribute rewards and that's what keeps the so nfts are essentially are what keep is one of the things that is helping keeping chia decentralized um besides images like beyond images right so that's where you kind of get interested like i think and like image nfts and profile pictures i think for a lot of the nft community on chia are just like a first step we're learning the primitives, uh, you know, and we're doing the most easy, basic things. But like, you'll notice a lot of the NFT, like the better NFT projects evolving into something, you know, a little bit better now, because 
you've you've learned you've done the pro, you've done the profile picture thing okay what's next you know maybe you add a token maybe you add more nfts but you start evolving like the nfts are evolving and they're getting better and they're starting to you know represent real world objects and and what and what, what so what what does that mean like it's getting better so like yeah obviously it probably depends upon the project of like what's going on but right. you have examples uh you kind of alluded to them there for a second of like right the nft just kind of I don't, I don't get, I don't understand NFTs to this, like, that's why I don't own any NFTs. Right. So, cause I don't, I don't understand like the thought process or like the, why, why buy an NFT? Like what's, what, I just it's don't. Digital ownership. It's, it's, it's what it comes down to simply is this digital ownership. You're owning the good that, you know, provably owning the good on a blockchain essentially so for somebody like an artist like a digital artist in the web 2 world you, once you put your art on the internet it is free for the world to the sharks to right click save forever and ever you might not necessarily you know get any reward or even make money from it um it's very hard for i think digital creators in web 2 um to unless you're really good and you can get the contracts from you know whoever um it's very you know it's a lot more cutthroat whereas now with web3 as a creator you can kind of take the reins and do your own thing and it just all comes back down to digital ownership right mm -hmm. whether it be in the like owning a did like a, a a real world asset on the blockchain or you know just owning digital artwork movies whatever you know, and using all of the utility that you kind of get with it, be it like token gating or, you know, community building, right? That, that's like the main thing that you're seeing right now, right? Would be like the community building side. But I think that's like a logical first step. And now you're going to start to see things evolve a little bit. Like I, I'm seeing like music and, you know, music be a popular topic of discussion for MP3, uh, you know, like sales. Um just like one of those things where like you're, you're giving the control to the creator. Right. Um, and on Chia, you do, they, it does it better than anywhere else. And it gives you the tools necessary to do it without having to be a genius blockchain solidity developer. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to write a line of code to mint an NFT on Chia. You can go to mint garden. Um, you can download the studio and you can point click your way to being, you know, a uh, web three artist and i'm actually currently going through an onboarding process right now with a local artist here um he's a native artist he does great work he goes all around the country and he does murals for schools and and he has a, a beautiful gallery and his whole family is actually amazing artists um they do like some great work on like birch bark with charcoal and stuff like that and they're actually like wanting to kind of get into the web three world so i was like oh listen like i can kind of help you and he finds it actually quite, you know, welcoming on Chia because it is so easy. It is just like point and click, right? Like it's very, for him, he can figure out how to do it, albeit he, he's made a few mistakes along the way. But, you know, he's 65 and he doesn't really know computers too much. But if he can, you know, just jump on after me going and kind of showing him a couple times how to do it. And then now he's doing it himself. That's That's what you want, right? You're empowering somebody like that who you know, who lives by his artwork, you know, now he has another avenue for making money, you know, and just continuing that lifestyle. And can so, you melt, can you melt, uh, I don't know what the verbiage is, but you can actually, so right here, because I was thinking about this concept and somebody mentioned to me earlier, whoops, not this one. Chia NFT is the coin, not just yeah. an image. Exactly. So it's, yep. with the coin is the image metadata license and also the smart coin. So can you, transfer it back to the coin what uh, I mean, what do you mean by that because i remember i was watching an interview and they said oh you mean like melt it back to the mojo yeah, i don't know if it was melt or strip or whatever melt, the melt. word was but okay. back into the coin directly um you need to do a special kind of nft for that i don't believe it's unlocked on chia right now it's something that we've been talking about um you know chia is kind of saying like we're probably not going to do an nft2 standard um you know, they've kind of figured it out that they're not going to do it. But like, I think if the community wanted to do an NFT two standard, and I think we're learning about some things that we would like NFTs to do a little bit better. 
So as a community, like I said, we're learning the technology as we go. Like you got to understand NFT technology has only been out for a few years. And I mean, most people haven't been doing it for 10. Like, I don't think there's anybody that's been doing, like there's very few digital artists that have been doing digital art for 10 years, let alone people playing around with NFT technology, right? So, and, and not only that, she is like this whole other beast of NFT technology. We're barely scratching the surface of what it can actually do. And I think as we grow, we'll figure out more. Can I, I, I had some follow-up. I just, for my understanding, and hopefully this is helpful for other people who listen to this now or are listening to the future, future. You said that NFTs could be used, utilized for uh, token gating, I think is what you said, and for, for the community building. Um, what do you, what is, what is token gating? And then how can you use these? And this is a hundred percent selfish question for the community building thing. Like I have a business. How could I incorporate something like this into my business? Like I, hey, people I, in the chat, give them some ideas too. So Yeah. Like, so if the way that you would want to incorporate NFTs into a business is especially an established, probably like, you know, brick and mortar type establishment, you might want to do rewards. An NFT could be a great avenue for a reward, like, uh, you know. Like, um, like, a, like a bonus card type thing? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I mean, why couldn't an NFT just be an image of a QR code, right? Like, I mean, what, like, that's what you got to understand. Like, NFTs are just a pointer to a blockchain, right? Like, you could have an NFT that is a 3D object that you can put into the metaverse. You can have an NFT that represents a title deed, realistically. Like, it was all QR code, right? So, literally, uh, I'm gonna list the things to do today. I actually got one. Speaking of that, I actually got one right here for anybody that's watching. I don't know if they can see that, but the I kind of I kind of snuck a QR code because that's how peer to peer cheat oh, is. Like, nice. I can just toss NFTs onto the stream, and people can uh, go and look for that really cheap NFT that I tossed out there. So, so, so I have it on here is to. Uh, Create QR code for like a, uh, this thing that I'm working on. Okay, so um, how you you are say a frequent buyer, right? So I want to reward you. Say every fifth purchase somebody makes, they get uh, an NFT that is a QR code that what would give them a discount or how, sure. how like this is the thing like then you might want to incorporate another one of Chia's really easy things to do and that's make a token. So you have now your NFT linked to a token. So every t every five scans, you know, it tosses them a token, right? Now you're talking about development at this point. You're not talking about just point and click NFT picture onto blockchain, but like, you know, you can actually use some of the primitives together to kind of make a more cohesive structure, whether it be for rewards. Um, I think rewards is probably a really good one, charity, how um, can you explain other ideas you have around rewards? It's like I understand a lot of people like the NFT thing clicks for them, and and it and I and I don't appear. I don't think that I feel I. I the, to me, okay. that NFT doesn't seem valuable to me. Yeah. Okay. Like, so yeah. So that, so then we'll go back into the token gating thing that you were talking about, and I don't know if you guys, everybody knows about Board at Yacht Club. They are one of the best at token gating crap. That they have like the elitist most elite token gated club that you could possibly get into, but like you could essentially do kind of similar things, right? Like, okay, so now we're going from, you know, rewards, every five scans, you get some tokens, maybe after a hundred scans, you get a NFT, which token gates you into like a VIP club or like a silver club or like, you know, and then you can potentially provide like incentives at each different structure. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're just giving, extra little level so the the token is essentially just like a badge right you're just giving like somebody like a rewards badge like it'd be great for like you know um incentivizing exercise for you guys like okay you ran a thousand kilometers now you get this little cool badge right like or you know you 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 listed uh, a certain amount of weight now you get like a little token of appreciation like a little trophy like like a sticker you know what i mean but like you can do things with this sticker like it can mean something. It could get you access into, you know, a specific group or a specific chat or give you a reward structure, which you can then incorporate into your business just by, you know, QR codes and scanning and other technology, right? That we, and like everybody can make a, like Chia has, 
um, like, you know, wallets. You could probably even make, I hate saying this, but you could make your own damn wallet and you could have your own, you know, like little private, like it, nobody, like it doesn't have to hit the blockchain if you don't really want it to. Like you can use da like data layer. That's kind of the whole point of what she is doing, like with the business side of things and the, the carbon credits is that's going to be private on a public blockchain. So you could do things like have your private business ledger kind of for yourself and for your, you know, clients, but you can just sure all of that stuff up on the blockchain. essentially, So, so everybody sees well, it. And, and it's probably going to be, you know, fairly obvious after you say this, but like, right. So you do something, say in that example, right. It's, you're, you know, if you buy one thing, you get like this thing. And if you buy five, you get maybe a different level. If you're at a hundredth purchase, you get something else. Right. But why not just implement that with like the stuff that's already out there that's, you know what I mean? Like just, okay, cool, bro. You just bought a code and then you get a code for something, right? Like what, what, why would it be valuable for me to, figure out how to implement like what are some other well, things and, and, that, and like that, that that would be up to you right like that's the thing is is you don't need blockchain for everything you really don't like there's some things you're just not going to need blockchain for it's not a good use case for everything that you're going to think about but what it would open up on chia is access to the entire chia ecosystem as well you know maybe gym rats got his own um thing going on too now you guys can combine forces now, as two small business owners, you guys have the same reward structure. You know what I mean? Maybe you have three guys that want to do it. You know, now you're building out like a community. And not only that, but you're incorporating yourself with the greater Chia ecosystem, you know, and all the decentralization that it comes with, all the peer to peer stuff that you'd want, right? Like now we can trade our badges and stuff or like collector's edition reward stuff, right? Like we don't have to just sit, buy and sell it. We can trade. So you don't have to think of the asset as like a, like an NFT asset now as like a, a nomical value. You can just think of it as like a Pokemon, like an actual Pokemon card, like a collector's piece that is more like, I find chip NFTs more collectible than other NFTs because I can actually do things like, package them together and then try to trade up, you know? So take a couple of my lesser NFTs and try to get a better one. And like, you know, and I, and we can all kind of figure out how to, so there's like just little things that you'd want and just being a part of the community is one thing, but you know, that's the, that's up to you to decide. You might not want blockchain at all. And when you're in a community early and if you're either mining, I mean, if you're farming and you have these coins and you're also adding people to the system, you know, like the, the greater goal would be, you know, to pamp your bags, you know, not essentially, but. And somebody said right here, Chia Dog, sorry, I was reading all the chats. Folks with more than three pro proof of attendance badges, sounds like they went to three meetups, are in my meetup. chat channel. So if Sam, there's certain things Sam can't say on the Internet, period 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 like and he would say out loud probably if you were having a lunch with him or something and in a secret group you could say well i know you're super serious if you bought 10 products and you went to a meetup and you get your certain badges or nfts for that you get access to sam's private whatever group or you know if there's a decentralized app or something like this so I could see, you know, it's a little fuzzy because, you know, each blockchain individually, it's like why be on one rather yeah. than the other. But I know why I would want to be on Chia rather than the other downstream. And it's really not essentially about money. It's more about security. It's more about decentralization. It's more about that. I think that it will stand up yeah. while everything else might but, fall. Well, let, let, let me try to add one more to that. How about building a digital identity, like a true digital identity that you own? Like this is the other thing that like, you know, there's the, like Chia has got these things called DIDs, right. Which give you various level of control over verification in your wallet. Right. So, you know, if you're an accredited investor, you could essentially in a future, not right now, but like in a future where, you know, Chia's IPO and things are going good. We're trading carbon credits a little bit, you know, like in the future you could, establish yourself as an accredited investor on the blockchain through something like a digital identity. You could establish yourself as Jim Rat Crypto, you know, the guy uh, with a digital identity. And I think, you know, this whole idea of the digital identity kind of goes beyond Chia, 
like it, it i think it's something that you know a lot of people should probably consider especially in as we're moving from web 2 to web 3 like building your digital identity but being able to open up levels of access like you know ma like maybe you know, like off camera identity. we might yeah. i have the did and i posted it like below because all the guys told me to do that can you explain why that's so important so no. sam basically when you open up your chia wallet and you do your 24 words you get your wallet address and then if you go to file and then i can't remember the exact uh road through it but then you can create a digital identity can you explain what the difference from that is as to posting yeah. your actual wallet address so so everything in chia is a coin okay everything that you can think of in chia is a coin nfts trans like all the tokens blah, blah blah everything is a coin so a did is just a special coin that kind of aggregates a bunch of assets into one kind of general um place it's like a pool of assets um because you can have multiple addresses on chia right you can have tons of addresses it's not like ethereum where you're you make a MetaMask and you have your one address. You know what I mean? So like Chia to kind of facilitate being able to actually pull stuff together. Cause like, if you look at one of your individual like wrapper, addresses, wrapper it's kind of like a wrapper. Exactly. It wraps all of the things that you put into it, into it. And this like also, a jar or bowl where you exactly. Can put and then Chia is going to take this concept one step further when they release their um, security infrastructure for the wallet. So like, a time lock or a clawback that will be a coin so you're essentially putting your tokens into this special coin that has a rule that says anytime a coin is taken out of this coin because everything's a coin so you're taking coins out of coins and you're putting coins into coins that you can claw it back or it has a certain you know multi-sig feature so everything it's like a special coin it's all like so a DID is a special coin that aggregates all of your assets from all of the different addresses that could possibly it could possibly come from into one, so that people can see it through that one string. So, so you um, like on Ethereum, right? You're like trying to keep track of all your shit because you have like so many different addresses, whether it's on Ethereum or like other chains and stuff yeah. like that. But it, on Chia, you have all, and I'm speaking from ignorance here. You you have all your addresses tied to one DID? Yeah, so the <laughs> it's this is high level stuff now. So you have like a parent address and then you have all of the other address. So you have like your kind of like your private key essentially and then all of the addresses kind of link back to the private key somehow. Cause like you can have infinity amount of addresses. It's actually one of the biggest gripe points for some of the nft developers is that like after a certain point you use so many addresses that your wallet actually can't see all of the coins in it because like it'll only go up to a certain it's called a derivation index right so it'll look for all of like up to like 2500 different addresses but really you might have used 10,000 or whatever so um yeah so like a did is just like a special coin to kind of help tie everything together but also give like a level of um, segregation. So you can have multiple DIDs with multiple levels of whatever privacy, public, you know, public stuff, private stuff. Um, realistically, it's just another way of saying. So in Chia, rather than having like multiple, you should be able to do everything with one wallet, essentially. Oh, and not have multiple wallets? Yeah, because you can just have different DIDs and have different levels of accreditation. So why have multiple wallets, right? You Plus, have one like, DID inside of another, so to speak, or like uh, possibly, yeah. Like it's good. You gotta like so. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like because everything is a coin on Chia, you're wrapping a lot of things inside of other things, right? So yeah, you're essentially just building like a web of like another, you know, like a string of web, the web to start from again, right? So. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like could, could go, I mean, I'm picturing like a tree. Right? You got to think of it like fanning out, and then like when you it like fans back into the DID, almost like a file, like you know, or a folder. You have a folder. It's got like a whole bunch of files in it. You know, you can move or that like folder a tree, around. A tree, I think of like a tree as an example, right? You have the trunk, which is the DID. DID. You could have a large branch on the left and the right and the front and the center. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, and then you can have another one, back. and then you can trade the DIDs because you can trade coins and. That so you could basically stay secure from your one front end wallet and then just stay on that and keep adding DIDs. 
yeah like especially like in terms of like a like a warm wallet or whatever yeah I, you might want to have another separate set of keys for a cold wallet that you use as like your long-term storage but for the most part your warm wallet because i'm not going to call it hot because if you do it properly it's actually quite warm and it's quite secure because you're segregating all of your coins right like so when you know you got to really get fished and you got to lose your keys to get hacked onto you like you really got to lose your keys like you're not going to sign a spend like chances are you're not going to sign a spend that's going to empty your wallet because it's just so hard and a lot of the times like chia people that are in the space now we use offer files like religiously so we know that it's safe 100 percent because those offer files are peer-to-peer -peer trustless transactions right so it's one of those things where as long as you're using offer files now there could be situations where there's malicious offer files in the future you got to be a damn genius to figure it out you got to learn how to write chia lisp which is <laughs> have fun doing that and that's one of the reasons why they chose lisp as a language because it's freaking hard to do it really good as opposed to solidity which is really easy to do good but hard to secure so it's like and i heard it's chia lisp is much easier to audit once it's finished yeah well because like, banks like have been using it, it for when it's years. done it's done and you can and you can see through it much better and solidity not so much like yeah. anyone can kind of get in there and mess with solidity but not everyone can make sure that it's correct yeah so like and even then at the, even then even then if you find your yourself into like a, a situation where you find a malicious offer file you're only ever exposing that coin that you're going to go buy it with. So say you're going to spend an XCH on an NFT. That NFT is a malicious offer file. You're only going to lose that XCH. You're not going to lose the other hundred that are sitting in your wallet. You're not going to lose because, all the other NFTs. Is it because it's not possible to no. expose that much? It's it's really not. It's super hard. Like now, you Gia, be super, super ignorant to do that it, or basically... Yeah, you can be super ignorant to use offer files as far as I'm concerned. Like, I mean, and, at and worst, you're going to lose the coin. Your whole amount. Like, say yeah. if somebody has 10 grand and then they're like, okay, cool, I'm going to go buy something for 50 bucks. And like... Now, this is where you got to be careful. So you want to split, you want to make sure that you're splitting your coins. This is something that Chia is going to be bringing up. So if you expose a bigger coin, it could very well possibly take that whole coin. So if you're... You, like taking an offer file, say you have a 10 XCH coin and it's for one XCH. I, I'm not confident that it wouldn't take the whole 10 XCH, but you could split that coin, essentially make change. You, instead of using a $10 bill, you use the $1 bill. And that way you're only going to lose the $1 bills. Like that's, you make change before you make some a deal like that. Right. So that's it's just like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to meet you and you're buying something off of yeah. Facebook marketplace, and, and I don't need to bring 10 grand to fucking meet you. There's no point to do that because I'm going to buy something from you for a hundred bucks. There's, it'd be foolish for me to bring out my, yeah. my, you know, 10 grand to be like, hold on, let me get out the 20th for you. Okay, yeah. Well, and it'd be even worse because it would just be one $10,000 bill, right? Like that's kind of the thing you got to understand about Chia is the coin set works like a wallet, works like cash in your wallet. The only difference is it could be any denomination. It could be 0. 0.000001 is a coin. It could be one is a coin it could be 1.415 is a coin it's you know what i mean and it could it, it, there's no like 5 10 15 20 denominations it's just whatever denomination so, right is there a, is, i want to ask is there a dex and then i want to touch back on the nft things because yep. like i'm just thinking about like what i could do how could i implement because i think i think they're interesting and i understand that a lot of people like them and find them fascinating but is there a dex in the sense like Uniswap or, or things like that on Chia? So there actually is uh, DEX coming. Now, AMMs are quite new to um, Chia. We do have a DEX for offer files, DEXI.space, um, D-E-X-I-E.space. It's where but you what, go. What, what, offer so, files meaning NFTs or? Offer files meaning anything that an offer file is. It could be a token. It could be a NFT. Yeah, it could be XCH. It could be anything um, that an offer well, file. Well, it's kind of like an eBay almost, so to speak. It, Pretty it, much, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a different kind of it's a different kind of DEX. Yeah, it's like a peer-to-peer -peer DEX. So everything that happens on DEX is 100% peer-to-peer. Um, so AMMs are coming. I think uh, it's called uh, Yak Swap or Tibet Swap or something. It's using Uniswap V1. It's not released yet, from my understanding. It's still kind of in the works. Um, but we are talking about this kind of stuff. So it is coming. 
Um, but right now we're using like an even more decentralized version of a DEX through Dexy, because I think in my opinion, like through Dexy and through offer files, you're, it's essentially true peer to peer. Like there's, there's this concept in Chia of like over the counter offers, right. Where you can like trade with people in a, you know, a Twitter chat. Or we can just do it in the private chat here. We could start trading large sums through email. Like, so. What, what do you What do you mean? What is that different than? Maybe? Well, yeah, because like then you're not affecting the price, right? So you're looking at like the De like Dexy's not tracked, right? So a lot of the movement of Chia actually doesn't happen on centralized exchanges. Most of it happens on the Dex, right? So you don't see a lot of the volume that actually happens on Chia on a day to day basis. Um, it's kind of hidden. Would that be how would that be different though than like okay the three of us want to do some type of business deal and okay cool we just exchange yeah, you we know just exchange. Our, our, but but would, would we just exchange our Ethereum address is it any different than that no no you would just you would just you wouldn't exchange addresses like that you would just put it all in a offer file and you know I would trade with you you we would figure out a way to aggregate the the deal so that everybody gets what they want. But essentially what you'd be doing is you'd be doing it all trustless peer to peer. You don't have to know who's, I don't have to know it's you on the other end to trust an offer file. For the so an people. offer file in essence is a smart contract yep. that's pretty easily decentralized to program. Yeah. It's like built in trustless peer to peer. It's just like what um, one person signs one half of the transaction. They kind of um, broadcast the other half. If somebody has the other half of the transaction, they fill it, it kind of all goes back to the blockchain and then it's, then, you know, it does its thing and it's, it goes through. Um, so you don't have to broadcast it to Dexy. We, that's what I was, that's what I was kind of touching on. Like you don't need the Dex um, to actually trade. We can do it in a Twitter space. We can do it. You know, all I'm sending you essentially is a string for the offer file or like the QR code, you know, I can just send you QR codes and I don't have to broadcast them to the decks, right? So there's well, a so little bit of a caveat. Really, you don't really, I mean, because it's a completely different way of thinking about things in the sense that like, I mean, what is a DEX for? It's for liquidity purposes, right? But you don't necessarily, there's only certain people that actually need uh, DEX, right? Because 99.9999% of people can just be like, hey, GRC, you know, I've got 20 bucks and we're going to do a deal or can you split that change for me? Or like, you know, as a poor example, but um, most people don't actually need a DEX. It's more so uh, of a, you know, potentially a reflection of legacy into the crypto space yeah. where you, it sounds like you could be structured potentially differently where you don't actually necessarily need that if you have the ability to create a smart contract however you want and the ability to create a smart contract where the way of however you like to is decentralized enough in the sense that it is simple to do like you you mentioned a 65 year old dude you showed him how to do it once or twice and now he's able to actually do that right if you ask me how to create a smart contract on ethereum i don't fucking know how to do that right like other than like hey i know by going through Uniswap and creating an LP position creates an NFT, which is a smart contract, right? Then I guess I could create a smart contract. But if you're like, hey, Sam, I want a smart contract that has X, that has Y, and we're going to do it this way, right? I wouldn't know how to do that. And it sounds like it's relatively simple to do that in, in Chia, which is really, really powerful when you think about it. Because if we knew how to do programming Sorry. if more people knew how to no you're good if more people know how to do programming to create and build things right there's a tiny subset of the population who knows how to do that but if it was simple like simple to the point where i could do it and grc could do it and we could create things because it was like a interface that was like instagram or something like that and i could just go through and create stuff that i just i could just create stuff that would be really, really, really powerful. That would be sounds... sweet, dude. I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, you explained it better than right. I did. Actually, you got you. You actually understand it. That's what I mean. Like they're mm -hmm. making it easy for you guys like you that wanna. Like, I mean, it's still not easy, but we're it's getting there. We're we're getting there slowly. You know, two years. Oh, that's fucking real powerful. 
That's yeah, it's weird. powerful. Like, dude, it's not like you think big brains make tokens. Not on Chia. Anybody can make a to token. You think big brains mint NFT projects? Anybody can do it. Like, they're it's novel. Like, it's laughable on Chia. Like, you know, you better bring something to the table other than just a token and other than just an NFT, or else chances are people are just going to be like, you got to do something else, man. You got to bring some kind of eat some fire, right? Cool. No, this is this is very interesting. I, I've had a bunch of conversations. I like Chia. I don't own a Chia, but I like Chia. I like every single person that I've talked to about Chia. And they're all smart and, and intelligent people who know their shit. And, I'm, and I like talking to those people because then I get to learn from them. Um, but this is this is maybe it's taken this long for me to synthesize this and actually kind of like click on it. But this is a uh, fascinating question on like, I'm going back to say rewards program. So you, me, and GRC, we understand crypto to a certain extent because we're all in crypto in multiple different places. And we know how to get around and we know how to create wallets, whether it's on this chain or this chain, right? And how to move shit around. Right. But when I, if I were to say implement something like this, where so say you spend $1,000 or as a reward, then you get this NFT at which, you know, the NFT could give you access to something, whether it's a private group or you can just scan the QR code. But then it also gives you, you know, 10% off or 20% off or something like that. Um, and the people who are going to be buying that physical thing, no diddly squat about crypto, which you would think, okay, well, that's going to be a negative, right? That like nobody's actually yeah. going to claim the NFTs on the one hand, but that could also be an opportunity in the sense in some other way. I know it's an opportunity in some other way. I just don't. What other, how could you shift that? Because so say if you're doing well, that, like that comes down to you as a business owner, right? Like, why does anybody know it needs to be crypto? Why does anybody need to know? You can do it see, fairly seamlessly and just use the, the blockchain's tooling. Like, you know, tokenomics, it's really easy. It's all there. You know, you don't have to do any of the math, right? You just mint the token and hand it out to people and the blockchain kind of figures it all out. But you can, like I said, if, the more deep you want to get in and the less blockchain that you want to go, you as the business owner or the developer have that opportunity to segregate it as much as you want. You might want to just use data layer. You might not want to use maybe specifically NFTs. Like, like I said, there's certain use cases for blockchain that you're not going to even just want to bother with, but you might want to use some things, right? So it's up to you to kind of figure out the balance of how deep you want to take the rewards, right? Like, and if you do it smart enough with a well enough front end, I believe, like if you present something that's really easy to use, there's no real reason that anybody needs to really know, um, you know, that it's crypto. They might just think of it as like, you know, muscle token at the end of the well, day. How can, you, can you can you explain that? So like, I, as, I don't, I'm not like on or own any XCH, right? So, uh, when I think of crypto, uh, I mean, it's super effing obvious that I'm dealing with crypto, but how you said a, a, u a user interface, right? Um, where somebody could come in and, you know, not realize that they're dealing with crypto. And that seems like, oh, cool idea, bro. That seems like so far in the future, but you're like, Sam, wake the fuck up. It's happening right now. So what, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Just make yourself a little wallet. You know, make make a little wallet that handles your coin, right? Build a little infrastructure for your rewards and just keep everything in house as much as possible, right? Like, um, sure, pe like, you know, you can let people know, hey, listen, this is on the blockchain, you know, maybe like uh, you just you just keep it all, like, you know what I mean? Like Dexy doesn't, you can go to Dexy and be like, I don't want you to list my coin. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to be private or whatever. Like the blockchain is going to see it. Like this is a good use, more of a good use case for data layer because you can keep things private as a business right so it's just like i said like it's it's the option to take it the next level so you can just use the tools in a private manner how you'd like and then open up blockchain however to your community however but like at the end of the day you're essentially just building an infrastructure basis for yourself right it's just for the business it's not necessarily you know if it, it, it would have to be like, you know, um, voluntary as well. Like, you know, go if you want to be part of my rewards, you don't have to be part of the rewards, right? Which most people, some people don't want to do it. Some people do, right? Like depending on what place I'm at, I don't give a shit about your rewards. 
you know? Well, well, how would somebody access the rewards, though, if they don't know about, like, a wallet and things like that? Well, that's what I mean. You would just make it easy for them. You would just build the – you wouldn't necessarily – you'd build your own, like I said, little mini wallet, too. Like, you're talking development to do this. It's not just, like, you know, it might not – like, if the deeper that you want to go with, like, making it easy for people not to understand its blockchain, the more you're going to have to develop because – if not, then you're just going to, it's all going to revert right back to the blockchain right away when you go and do stuff, right? So you're going to have to take that extra step to privatize it on a public ledger. So it's a little bit harder. Um, but like I said, though, like you can low key have it on blockchain and just, you know, keep it as much as you can in house. So the most of the value gets driven right back to where you're building anyways, because you can't use it anywhere else. So it's all just going to eventually come, hopefully come back, you know, but at the same time, you also give this like weird peer to peer, you know, ability for them. Like if they want to explore more, you know, maybe like Jim Rat's got his thing, right? If you want to go and try, you know, and check out this guy's stuff too, like advertising or whatever, you can link all together and it just meshes. It's just meshing, right? Like it's, if, if you have the infrastructure built and then somebody else has the infrastructure built, it's a lot easier for you guys to conglomerate, right? So uh, on an individual business level, it might not make sense, but in like terms of partnering and building out like rewards, you know, um, maybe you're like, um, I don't know. Uh, what the hell I've got friends that have franchise, business. like maybe like a franchise, right? Like maybe you want to do stuff like locally with other franchises as opposed to doing like national shit, right? Like, I don't, I don't know the rules of franchises, but I'm assuming like there might be opportunities for, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's almost like a franchising opportunity where you can extend to the greater community of users. Cause like there might be other users oh. that think like you too, right? Like not everybody on Chia really is big blockchain. A lot of them are gray beards and this is their first go. So it's not like a typical standard crypto community. A lot of the people that are here are building, right? And building for their own use case. So really? I'm sure eventually yeah, that's that what I've change. noticed too. It's like everyone in Chia, like I'm like the first random dude that just wants to learn about Chia for no reason because I think it's secure and fun and all the guys are really smart. But generally they all have their, they're not just like spectating, really. They're all yeah. like individually doing something and this is the place where they can do it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you and you and you have to do that. That's kind of what I was saying. You need some zest. You have to add something else. You can't just go and like throw out, you know, a token or whatever without having some kind of utility or use case. Or there's just like everybody's building. Like nobody. Like I'm sure it'll change. It's just like you just you have to kind of build it for yourself at this point because like if you don't you're just kind of waiting for everybody else to build right so a lot of us are just kind of doing our own thing and you can have so much fun with the blockchain that like things that were hard before are kind of easy now so it's like why not give it a go like i would have never thought about minting an nft project on ethereum i could never do it but then like you know somebody like ace Bail comes up with mint garden studio makes it point and click now i'm a freaking legend i'm an expert you know what i mean like and 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 now i'm like it takes you on to the next step and then the next step and you just keep digging and then you keep building more and you just keep wanting to, I don't know. She is really build centric. It's very utility centric because it's not a number go up coin. It's if you don't build some kind of value on Chia, chances are you're not going to get rich. You have to actually work. Which or is you can beautiful. Buy, or beautiful. you can buy the bottom, which it looks like. Or buy the bottom little, with large A little bit of, of support money. on the bottom, Sam. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? Bull run starting to get up. Chi has been down. Obviously, it minted from one. Guys, if you don't understand like the minting process or like the distribution process, the chart's not going to make sense to you. And everyone's just going to say, oh, rah, 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 rah. but really, everyone's just mining. Um, but I'll, I'll finish that statement in one second. Real quick, guys, I just dropped Sam and Foods Twitter. They're both pretty active on Twitter. And then I have the tweet out here, guys. I'm coming in here. To bring the masses to Chia. Just kidding. But I do want to support Chia in general. And I want Sam to learn as much about. I really think that Chia is awesome for a lot of different reasons. And I, yeah, sometimes I just take notes and try to figure out everything because it's a long process. And I know that I don't, I'm not going to figure out everything in one day. But I understand what they're doing is to set themselves up for global 
adoption, something that I thought Ethereum was able to do. But as I learn, I realize Ethereum is not able to do because it's completely broken. And it takes me three hours to send a Bitcoin transaction, which is so stupid. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Bitcoin maxis make no sense. But Sam, let's listen to these for you. These are for you. So I want to talk to cookies. I want to talk to cookies. Oh, I know. Dude. I'm going to try to do one one show a week or every bi-weekly. Was it, was it, we talking it about the deer, he was talking about the deer market, wasn't he? I wore my deer hat. Oh, my God. That deer market analogy. I got, I got, I got my deer <laughs> market hat on for cookies. I had to wait for him to pop up there. But, yeah, I'm wearing my deer the hat. The deer market for, uh, analogy will live in infamy forever. He says, you know when a deer gets shot and you're like, damn, the deer <laughs> ran away. It, but then, you know, if you're a good hunter, you know it's going to die quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sam makes an NFT collection listed for sale in XCH. Sam makes a coin called Flex. In the future, Sam rolls out a 10% discount NFT. To buy it, users must have one original NFT plus one Flex coin. Anyone holding 10% discount NFT can use Wallet Connect feature on Sam's website to verify they hold the NFT and get the discount on the website. And then this is another example. Sam hosts a product on his website for $50 when it's purchased. It delivers a QR code to a privately hosted website that has a link to download a Chia wallet and an offer file that gives it 5%, gives gifts $5 of XGH. There is also an offer file for an NFT that consumers buy and now has the club access pass. So we'll sit, me and Sam are going to work through these ideas in the future because this is all me and Sam think about making would- money and getting better at stuff. And but one more thing before we go, I want I mean, before Sam asked that question, I wanted to show everyone my little collection here is getting kind of serious. My my Chia NFT, uh, my Chia playlist. I mean, it started off with cookies intro to Chia. And then we had special guest Grant. And then I had Dean Hoffman. I mean, Gene Doxis Satoshi on live Twitter spaces. And then I did a couple clips with Grant, Gene Hoffman. I'm come on, guys. We're almost up to seven Chia videos feels like yesterday I was just learning about Chia for the first time. I'm excited to make that playlist 100 videos of Chia. Have you guys had Gene on yet? No, dude. Oh, you know that's, that's all one. Huh? We're going to have to hook you up. With that <laughs> I, I want to see that one too. Yeah, me too. I, am, I am but a simple Gene simp, okay? When he speaks, I listen. Like it's well, There's no question. I am I, I I guys that are really smart, and I follow them into oblivion. And it started with Sam six years ago. I couldn't find any honest content on the internet. None. Zero. Zippo. I was very young and naive. And then there was this guy named Sam that was just doing free videos, spitting alpha all day long. Probably listened to 150 hours of him. Now we're streaming together, you know? So, and then I found, you know, Richard Hart, Gene Hoffman, these guys that are thought leaders in their own space. I just like to follow them to oblivion. But but Gene has that just that jazz in his voice, man. He that oh he's he's incredible. I can't wait to get Gene on the show. That's one of my goals. Go ahead, Sam. So if, if make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. I am going to do. Doesn't matter what the hexagons think. I love Chia, and yeah, I'm and I'm, gonna make I'm, more Chia videos. Before Sam asks a question too, I just want to say I'm really glad that you guys are making content because Chia content on YouTube is kind of sporadic, and not everybody's necessarily doing it right. So uh, I'm glad that you guys are taking, you know, um, taking the time to actually like support the community. It's awesome. Um, we're here for it. I'm definitely here to answer any questions you guys need off camera. We can deep dive into it a little bit more and a little bit more of like a actual level, right? So. Yeah, it's one of those things just like the community is here to onboard. We're all working like, you know, a lot of us are working for free in Chia, holding our Chia that we make. Like we're not making anything. We're working for free right now. But like we're it's just, just wait, just we're wait. Building, man. Your, Sam always talks about all that work you put in in the first five years. Right. And you're basically yeah. like on a flat line. And when it goes and you're in position already, it's exponential gains. It's parabolic gains. Because you did that hard work out of your heart and you really wanted to do it. The only reason I'm talking about Chia is because I think Chia can be great in the future. And I want to be there for all this to happen. And so I wanted to start like this. It's so small. Like what an opportunity. To me, it just screams opportunity, right? I want to talk about all these cryptos really early. And I love that no one's talking about it. I love that there's no YouTube videos about it. Like I, I love when I type in Chia Network, like my face pops up, me and Sam's little chia farming face pops up it's like that makes my day 
And so I really appreciate the Chia community being so welcoming to someone who's not as technical too. Like I come in there and ask questions about proof of stake when you guys are all talking about, you know, storage and this, that, and the other. And I just come in, I'm like, what do you guys think about ETH proof of stake? And, you know, then they're kind of, we open up that conversation. So I really appreciate the Chia community. I could tell they were good people by the way they responded to someone that didn't really understand what was going on at the time. Chia community is good people with good intentions, which is rare in this world. And it means, and it shows a lot. It shows a lot about the community and what they're trying to build. Uh, foods, this is, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I've talked to cookies a bunch of times and I, I enjoy the conversation every single time. And, and then it might like whatever, wherever he was seeing, I was not seeing in the vet, but yes, decentralized, super secure. Cool. I love that. Right. And then I'm like adoption. Right. And, and we I asked you this before we came on, but I've asked cookies this, I think two or three different times when we streamed on it. And I, and I don't see the picture that he's painting for uh, adoption of Chia and, and finally grabbing another piece of like the, the puzzle that you guys are, are seeing but but from my point of view, like NFTs are still not like that. It's not something that I necessarily tr like understand to see the value in. But what what I did bring together is that if you have like that tool, because this, this is what I think is powerful, and, and we're, why we see no coding tools, no coding tools, and like certain spaces are have like really on fire over the last like three years, and it's going to continue with AI development. It's just like you don't need code but like sam doesn't know diddly squat about code could put together something using no code tools that would require code five years ago and if chia is this thing where you can go through and build like i that's how one of the ways i think about myself is like building things like and if it's not something that's going to provide future value to myself whether it's learning something new building relationships investments of some sort financially speaking or things like that for my business it's like okay cool but i don't really have a time in my life to do that because it's not important to me because i want my my future sam to be in a better spot in every way shape or form health relationships, monetary, mentally, all these different things. So I, I want to take steps where the future Sam is going to be in a better spot. And if Chia and the network is this space where it's been simplified to a point where Sam can go start building on there and I can create whatever the F it is that I want. Wow, that's the adoption in my mind. Yeah, the, and the ability for me to go because the impact I will have because there's weird dudes like me out there, right? That own that's how they make decisions about like life. Like it's like, oh yeah, you come chill, watch it, do this other thing. It's just not interesting to me. I'd rather build or do something that I view as productive in my life. And this could be very interesting as adoption because I would be the person who would be driving adoption. And you have yeah. to put together a shitload of smart people globally that are all thinking like that. And it's like, That's holy funny. shit, I can build this community as, as in me, Sam. Like, and that's very, very, that could be like. Yeah. Very and that's powerful. just one. And that's just one prong, Sam. That's just the community aspect, right? Like you got to think of Chia as like a multifaceted organism. It doesn't just have one head. It's like a three headed dog. Okay. You got Chia Network Incorporated, like literally going like the business going after world government, going after enterprise, you know, building an actual utility for crypto in the carbon market. Like some, like, you know, who people were thinking about doing it before, but nobody's done it right. So now they're doing it right. You know what I mean? And then you got the community driving adoption, right? And then the blockchain just kind of sits there and anybody can use it, right? And anybody can secure it and anybody can do whatever they want with it. And, like I'm kind of a perfect example of like Chia Net. Like everybody might think like, oh yeah, Chia Network Incorporate. Like they kind of centralize the blockchain. No, they couldn't stop me from uh, burning marmot photos onto the blockchain. They had they hated it. Every like I had so many people tell me it was a stupid idea. It probably is a stupid idea, but who cares? We did it despite them, right? So like the, the there's this cool like symbiotic relationship where like we all kind of are doing our own version of onboarding and adoption where the chia's got like chia community has their own idea chia network has their own idea 
And then I'm sure the Chia blockchain has its own idea too. It's probably an AI at this point, right? So like when we all come together, it, it, it's actually like we make some seriously good music. Like, you know what I mean? Like when we're all working on the same page, but every once in a while too, that friction between the, like the dynamic between like, you know, this entity, this entity and this entity, it, it makes for kind of like a boardroom style. Like, you know, we're all like, Chia Incorporated now is using a lot of stuff that the community's building. And like I was saying, they're, they're stealing a lot of our developers, man. Like if you're if you're a cracked Chia developer, chances are Chia's gonna look at you and say, listen, like you're doing stuff that us as a business can use, right? But then at the same time, it all comes back to the community. So now we can use the stuff that they're using and building, right? And it just helps build this ecosystem where everybody has a chance, right? And you don't have to focus on what everybody else is doing. Like, who cares what Chia Network Incorporated is doing? You have the tools through the blockchain as a community member to do whatever you want. Drive your own adoption. Build your own little world. You know what I mean? Like, one of the cool things about, like, us being so decentralized is we are not stuck on any one platform or metaverse. Like, you're not going to pigeonhole us into a specific um platform you know what i mean we can use all of the platforms like right now we're building on spatial.io okay which is like a free-to-play metaverse um that anybody can use you can go to readyplayer.me and you can um make a free custom avatar that's where i got my guy right here he's uh, i don't know if you can see him oh there he is oh i see him yeah, yeah yeah so i got my little custom guy down there that you can go run around you can go find this shrine and it's all built in spatial we're we're starting to embed our own custom assets and stuff and build like our own worlds now, which is kind of fun. So, but like, we're not stuck on this platform. Like we're just using this platform as a mechanism right now. Cause it's the hot thing, but like we are so decentralized. I can move all my NFTs and link out from any platform I want. Like right now I have a working gallery in spatial where you click the link, it takes you to Dexy and you can go buy the NFT. I didn't have to connect my wallet to the website. I didn't have to connect MetaMask. I just, tossed out the offer file like the qr code and if anybody wants it they grab it if not they don't and it's just that simple i can do that anywhere i'm not trying to I see am if, not... It, this work, if it comes up <laughs> i think it was a little hard i tried to do it before too and it didn't work but it takes you to a pace bin and i'm sure somebody's grabbed it by now but um Please yeah start. like yeah so that, that that little pace bin string that is what you would copy and paste into your Chia client. Um, it's a little bit difficult to do, but you got to like hover your mouse over it and then you got to control V, but it'll pop up and um, yeah, it's great. It's just, it's pure to pure. Uh, this, this has been a, I appreciate this conversation. And uh, if Chia's, if uh, Cookies is still here, uh, I feel like I kind of clicked a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, because I know we've been having that conversation many different times. Um, so, Foods, this has been awesome. I, I really appreciate the conversation today um, and the the perspective on how, that you bring to what this is yeah. and what's going on. How can people? What's the best way for people to like support you if they want to support you or follow along or just learn what you're doing? Oh, you can check me out at uh, Twitter. That's probably the easiest way. I'm twitter.com uh, slash smurtxfood. Um, the second so I got that, that I got zero. that link below. I got that linked below here. So th there's this Twitter. And guys, they do spaces like almost every day. Go into the spaces and request the mic if you have a question. But yeah. now I'm going to have to have a talk with Gene about buying Chia because buying Chia is a pain in the ass. Yes, that's what I mean. You like you can't even go on to the market right now and buy like fifty grand, or else you're gonna get dumped on, bro. It's gonna be stupid. Like, <laughs> right, so you gotta but... OTC it for somebody that's got some, right? So you gotta definitely go above and beyond right now to uh, figure it out. Like, KuCoin's volume is like I'm pretty sure last time I looked at it yesterday it was like four hundred thousand dollars. Like, and well, I guarantee you, you try to put a big market order down, all the bots are just gonna move out of your way, and then they're just gonna eat you all the way back down. And, and so that's good it. advice. That's good advice, though, to to if you want to get started in Chia, to either uh, get a get some terabytes working or go OTC with a buddy, you know. But so, guys, but from I mean, what we know about the market, these things can only stay down so long. They seem miraculous once they start going up. And Sam, what do we know about the adoption curve? I mean, two, three, four years of a good technology that people want to use, and a bull market where the Fed prints out infinite money forever. Things can change rather quickly. 
And I think, you know, this is pretty hard double bottom right here, in my opinion. But um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with Chia. Don't go FOMOing in. That's not really what this is about for anyone at this point in time. Um, and to so that's all we got today. I have to I have to go run. But um on Wednesday, guys, 11 a.m. Eastern, we have stable coins crashing, USDL thriving with just ask Jesse. That's 11 a.m. Eastern. That's crypto in the morning. This is a little crypto in the evening episode. But I'm going to be doing my darndest to make a Chia ep- I want to dominate Chia YouTube. And I want to get better at this myself. And I like Chia. I have a Chia Rex. I have a couple NFTs. I'm going to get my hands on some Chia, some Mojos. And I'm excited. I'm excited because the community. I could tell why all these same people are aligning. I, I'm good with people, right? Like I can tell when people are on the right track. And I'm like, wow, all these amazingly smart people in one place. Hmm. Let me thunk for a second, you know, like cookies, all these people taking backlash, really supporting these products. It's not for act. They're not just doing it to have something to do. You know, they're doing it because they think this has long term potential. And in, you know, in crypto, long term potential is the most important thing. Security is the most important thing. And that's what I think uh, she is doing a great job of. So whoops, I clicked the wrong one. Um, we're going to put on the Crypto in the Morning song. Foods, thank you so much for coming on. This has been incredible. Sam, thank you so much as always for being here. Crypto in the Morning, 11 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday, guys. Make sure you smash the like, hit the subscribe button. I'll be getting better with my Chia content. Me and Sam are pretty much DeFi nerds. Like we're just like maxi profit nerds, but we're learning about these, these things and we're getting, we're getting, we're trying to get on the cutting edge of what's going to be popular five years from now, 10 years. But anyway, have an amazing day, guys. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm getting a little click happy. I don't usually stream at night, so I'm a little. Hey, um, food, thank you, bro. Appreciate thanks, you. foods. That was awesome. Amazing insight, and I really appreciate it. Anytime, I'll see guys. you guys in the Twitter spaces. And make sure next time you do an unrecorded space with Gene, somebody DMs the crap out of me because I was a little FOMO'd out that I missed that. Was it so much? Oh, my oh. God. You already know what time it is. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Crypt in the morning. Tuned in. Got me some hex and I'm making a stay. Got me some heads on, I'm making it rain. Pay me some maxi and that's just in case. Jim Renner sent me to show you the way. Sorry, I forgot to talk about this super chat honk. Later, guys.